So I can almost hear the question, there's so much to do, what am I supposed to be doing? However, the thing we need to understand is that step one isn't really a marketing plan. Step one is a clear outcome. We need to know what we're shooting for. And this is typically how we think about marketing. Like most people start with the plan and then eventually they get to the result. But really, we've got to start with the result, then we make the plan, then we execute it, and then eventually we actually get that result. Hey guys, a few months ago, I got invited to speak at the Small Business Development Center about five minutes from my house in Utah. I was super excited because I was speaking about one of my favorite topics, which is building a marketing plan. So whether you're an agency or you're a small business, it doesn't matter. This is going to help you massively to create a plan for yourself or for your clients. So let's get to the training. All righty, how are we doing? Thanks to everyone for being here. Well. Uh, super excited to be here. I was super excited about the opportunity. The BRC is awesome. Tons of resources here that are free. Uh, if you need anything, you can consult with Lauren. There's like subsidized offices here for starting your business, all sorts of cool things. But today uh, we're talking about crafting a marketing plan. So just a little bit about me. Uh, this is me and my wife. Uh, we're actually expecting our first child in November, so that's exciting. Um, and she's from Ireland, born and raised in Dublin, Ireland. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so my in-laws are here all the way from Ireland. Not for this, but uh, they just <laughs> happen to be in town. And uh, my story, I, I started a marketing company uh, four and a half years ago, four, yeah, around that. And, and actually three months ago we sold. So my company is, is the one that my head is covering there, Ortho Patients, and we sold to this company, Hip Creative. Um, we're actually both orthodontic marketing agencies. So very niche, very specific. And I think that depth of experience, just figuring out every single thing we could do to get better results for our clients in one specific area, taught me so much. And now that I've sold, I'm kind of branching out into other industries. Uh, mainly I'm consulting other marketing agencies, but I'm also uh, working with a few local business clients, small business clients, um, and I love it. It's my favorite thing. I think I was born to do marketing, so it's a lot of fun. So today we're gonna talk about the three ways that we can require a customer. There's really only three, and there's everything kind of fits under those three. However, these three, understanding them is gonna make it less likely for you to get taken advantage of by somebody who may have bad intentions. Well, that's a marketing company. It's gonna make it so that you have less shiny object syndrome, like which one, you know, which thing do I focus on? And um, in general, it's just gonna make your marketing more effective. So that's my goal here. So our three things, we've got media, we've got direct outreach, and we've got referrals. So let's cover each one in, return, in, in turn here. So media is a means of communication that reaches or influences people widely. That's the general definition of media here. Back in the day, some traditional examples of media, magazines, news articles, uh, papers, you know. 21st century, we've got blogs, we've got online newspapers, and we've got social media. Uh, when it comes to audio, Traditionally was the radio. Maybe that was a talk show or music on the radio or news on the radio. And nowadays it's more podcasts, music streaming places, right? Uh, and then when it comes to audiovisual, the traditional is gonna be television, news, talk shows, sitcoms, all that kind of thing. 21st century is all the logos you see up there. Social media is kind of like its own sitcom in some ways. Everybody has their own show. Uh, and then Netflix, Hulu, streaming services like that. So the big question we need to ask ourselves with media is we're gonna focus on paid media, earned media, or owned media. These are the three types. And uh, we'll cover each right now. So paid media <laughs> is media activity that's generated by paying another company. So Facebook ads is an example of this, or Instagram ads. The sponsored things that pop up on your post, that's paid media. So traditionally, we've got commercial breaks. So on TV and radio, it always pauses for a commercial, right? That's paid media. Print ads, same thing. There's the ad section in the newspaper, in the magazine. You pay for it to be there because people are already consuming that media and you happen to pop up in the middle of it. Next up, we've got signs. So billboards, local signs, and then sponsorships. So like Rio Tinto Stadium, they paid, I think it's close to $50 million to have their logo and to have it called Rio Tinto Stadium, right? That's a sponsorship, it's, it's paid media. In 21st century, we also have sponsorships, but it looks more like maybe a YouTube video where uh, they say, hey, this, this video is sponsored by this specific marketing company or this specific software company. 
And then we have social media ads, like I mentioned, and then search ads like Google, Bing, et cetera. You type in, you know, mortgage broker near me, and it's going to pop up three ads before it even shows you the, the first result, right? All those are examples of paid media. So the next one is earned media. Media activity that's generated by other entities such as customers or journalists. Examples here. Traditional, you can get featured. So maybe you're in your local news. Maybe you get featured on a talk show. Maybe somebody interviews you. And then also reviews. So uh, traditionally, these reviews were just kind of written out and maybe put on you know, a, a display inside your store or something like that. But today, they're on Google and Yelp. And that's an example of earned media. It's something that you earn. You don't create that yourself. You, you could pay for it, but uh, it's a little unethical. So what you want to do is, is earn as much of that as possible, right? Uh, but 21st century, getting featured. You could be on a podcast. You could be on somebody else's YouTube video. Um, and you could also be on somebody else's social media. So last one, and this is the most important, owned media, media activity generated by the company in channels it controls. So the reason this one is so important is because earned media, while it's free, isn't really free with your time. You've got to spend time networking with people, getting in with people who might be able to feature you. And uh, so it can be some of the best opportunities you have, but again, it takes time and a lot of effort. And then owned media, the reason it's so amazing, this is like, we'll, we'll throw up the examples here. So this is like brochures, traditionally brochures, a sign inside your store, maybe like a press release or something like that. And nowadays it's your list. It's a list of customers that you have. It's the amount of emails that you can send and reach for virtually zero dollars, or the amount of phone numbers that you can text and also reach for virtually zero dollars. And it's your social media following. The companies that have a following on social media or that have a massive list, if they're having a bad month, all they have to do is go to that list. Create something new to sell to them, send it to them, and they've made money already, right? That's the biggest deal. So your e-commerce company, for example, you've got the one product. Every time somebody buys, you're building a list. Now you can add supplemental products to that and email you know, 50,000 people with the supplemental products. You don't have to spend any money on ads. You don't have to try to get on somebody else's podcast or a talk show or something like that to get your product featured. You just send the email or the text. So that's media. So we've got number one on the three ways to acquire the customers checked off, but there's, all, there's three subcategories underneath that, right? Everybody following me so far? Good, okay. Next up is direct outreach, and there's two kinds of this. We've got, well, first let's, let's cover traditional and, and 21st century. So traditional is gonna be cold calling, door knocking, mailers. This is like where everybody's brain goes when they think marketing because it's the most understandable. Like, if you need to get the word out, it's just telling people, and it's doing it at scale, hopefully. 21st century is gonna be more like cold email, so you could get a bunch of emails and email somebody about your service. I'm sure you guys get cold emails every day as business owners. It's other people direct, uh, doing direct outreach to you. Social media DMs, also get a ton of those. Voicemail drops, and uh, texting is another one. So, depending on, uh, <laughs> Texting's like sort of a gray area legally, but I'm sure you guys have all gotten a text that's like, hey, do you own this home on this street? And you're like, no, I don't own that home on that street. <laughs> Happens to me every week, and it's the same one in Tooele, and I still don't own it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, voicemail drops is a cool one. You can literally just record a voicemail once and send it to like thousands of phone numbers, and it will pop up in their, their uh, voicemail inbox. It just counts as cold calling, but you don't actually have to make the call. So uh, that's direct outreach. And you'll notice kind of some of these are remote and some of them are in person. So you could walk into businesses, you could knock doors, that's in person. Remote, you have a little more leverage like cold calling, et cetera. Okay, last one is referrals. There's three kinds here, organic, strategic, and incentivized. So organic referrals, you get these because you have a great product or you provide a great service. So you're awesome at insurance. Everybody wants your insurance because you respond, you know, you're nice to the people you talk to, you take care of them. Proximity is another one. If you have a local business, like I chose my dentist because I can walk to him and I saw him when I went to a restaurant, right? Uh, then strategic, so that this is like overlapping industries referring to other industries. So the person that sells to the grocery store 
gets all their business through referrals. They're not marketing direct to consumer. They're going to companies that then sell their products to other people. Uh, supply chain is another one. So uh, an example, I mentioned my wife's pregnant. We just got the scan or the like the blood test to figure out the gender. It's a boy, by the way. And um, <laughs> they, the, the hospital just said, yeah, this is the company. We just take the blood test. We mail it off to them. This is who we recommend. This is who you should do it with. That's a strategic referral. They got in with Intermountain Healthcare, and now they're probably selling thousands of those blood tests every, every single year, right? And then lastly, incentivized. And this is affiliates and then bonuses. So affiliates, anybody know what affiliate marketing is? Raise of hands. Yeah. Can you give us the answer? Somebody uh, like has a blog post or something, and they have links to your products, and they get a little kickback for linking your products in their posts or things like that. 100%. But, okay, yeah, perfect. exactly. So that's an incentivized referral, right? You might like the product anyway, but you're much more likely to give it to somebody or recommend it to somebody mm -hmm. if you're getting some money in return. So very pop popular with software companies, and we uh, had somebody in here that's, that's with a software company. Those pay recurring commissions a lot of times. So you recommend somebody, and they'll pay you 40% of that person's, what they pay every single month, just goes straight to you just for referring them one time. So think about how you might be able to apply something similar in your business. Uh, another one is just bonuses. Like, this is more like, rah, rah, we're a great company. You're going to get this awesome gift basket for referring us. It's not as exciting as an affiliate program for me, but in some cases it works, especially when there's not a ton of margin to play with for an affiliate program that's quite big. So uh, this is the what we've covered so far if you walked in late. So we've got media, paid, earned, and owned, direct outreach, remote and in-person, and then referrals, organic, strategic, incentivized. So again, everything you're gonna hear about today, everything you ever learn about marketing is gonna fit inside this somewhere. So just think, again, we wanna avoid shiny object syndrome because there's way too much to be doing. So every time you see an ad or every time somebody talks about a specific marketing thing, think, okay, is this media? Is it direct outreach or is it a referral? and which one of them is it. And some of them overlap. It's not so much about the semantics of like, oh, it has to fit in this one. However, they all fit in here. And, and this is the basis of creating a really good marketing plan because we can see, all right, here's all my options. And let's go ahead and start somewhere on this list, right? And this is what I mentioned before. It'll help you focus your marketing efforts, make you less likely to be taken advantage of by somebody who may have bad intentions and allow you to systematically test what works best for your business, your niche, your area. So I can almost hear the question, but like of these eight activities, which should I be focusing on? There's so much to do. What am I supposed to be doing? However, the thing we need to understand is that step one isn't really a marketing plan. Step one is a clear outcome. We need to know what we're shooting for. If we don't have a goalpost, why are we walking, right? And you have to define what success looks like for yourself and most advertising fails from a lack of direction, not a lack of effectiveness. So let's take an example, or uh, just another way to illustrate this real quick. First, we got the marketing plan, then the marketing execution, then the marketing result, and this is typically how we think about marketing. Like most people start with the plan, and then eventually they get to the result, but really, we've gotta start with the result, then we make the plan, then we execute it, and then eventually we actually get that result, right? So we're gonna take the example of a restaurant, really easy to understand for most people because they understand the restaurant business model, right? Let's say this restaurant's goal is to make, it's their very first year in business and they wanna make 500 grand in their first year. So first of all, all right, 500 grand in a year, that's exciting, but let's pare that down because we need to break it down into a daily goal as a business. So first of all, that's uh, $41,000 a month or $1,387 a day, that's the outcome. This marketing plan has to get us $1,387 a day, or it hasn't done what we wanted it to do in the first place, right? And uh, I, I also broke this down and said, all right, so average lifetime value of a customer, 46 visits at $30 to this restaurant, every single person that visits spends $30 every single day, they're gonna get to their goal. 70 visits, or that's 70 visits at $20, or 139 visits at $10. So you can see the more we charge, the easier it is because we have to get less people in. All right, so next up, we gotta understand as we're building this marketing plan, what's called the marketing funnel. So funnel is kind of this word that like people throw out and they're like, 
Some people think it means a landing page. Some people think it means something else. It's really just a mental framework. And the framework is there's more people at the top than there are at the bottom. It's the definition of a funnel. And at the very top, we have awareness. So somebody needs to be aware of us before they can move to the next step, which is, is consideration. Before they can move to the next step, which is conversion. So that's actually them paying us money. And then a percentage of those will move in to become loyal customers, meaning they buy from us again and again, if it's something that they can buy again and again. And then a, a smaller percentage will move into advocacy, where they're actually promoting our business for us because they like the product so much, they like who we are, what we stand for so much. But again, the more people you put at the top, the more you'll have at the bottom, but it all starts with the very top, right? We all have to get people more aware of our business before we can have more conversions before we can have more loyalty and more advocacy. So here's an example for our restaurant, right? The awareness, let's say, let's take the proximity example. It, it goes up next to their house, this person's house, hypothetical customer. And they've been seeing the building like get renovated. They see the sign go up. They're excited to go visit it. And they drive past it every single day. That's their consideration. And then their conversion is one day they go home, they open the fridge. They don't want to eat anything in their fridge. So they close it, they drive to the restaurant, and then if the food's good, they're gonna be loyal, they're gonna go back there, right? And then if it's really good, they're gonna be an advocate, they're gonna leave a review, they're gonna tell other friends and family. Very cool. Let's take another example here. Let's say they don't live close enough to see it, they're not driving past it every single day, but they see an ad on social media, and it's like, oh, you know, $5 off your first meal, something like that. So then they click to the website, they're considering, they're looking at the menu, they're like, mm, should I take my wife here? I don't know what, uh, if I'm busy or like if this is gonna be worth it. And then they actually convert, they make a reservation. And then again, if the food's good, they're gonna be loyal. If it's really good, they're gonna be an advocate. So that's just kind of a, a framework to move into the next part of, of actually building the plan, right? So we've got our outcome, which is the marketing result. Next step is to build the marketing plan. Uh, but we needed to understand that funnel first, right? So I've listed for this hypothetical restaurant all of our options. We can do paid media, earned media, owned media. We can do remote direct outreach, in-person direct outreach, organic referrals, strategic referrals, and incentivized referrals. So for a restaurant, I personally said, you know, remote direct outreach and in-person direct outreach for a restaurant be a little weird. You could do it, but if you're knocking doors or cold calling to promote your restaurant, it's probably not gonna be super scalable long-term. However, I think the rest of these can totally work. So we're just gonna take out those two and we're gonna talk about a marketing plan for the rest of these. So first of all, paid media. First option we have is a billboard. So we can put that up for our restaurant. Then we could also do social ads. We could also do mailers. So that's a, a combination of like traditional and some more like 21st century stuff, right? Next up, we've got earned media. We could do a news feature. We could get as many online reviews as we possibly could. And then next up, we have owned media. So this is gonna be doing everything in our power to build our text and our email list because if it's a slow day, let's say it's a pizza parlor, it's a slow day, it's like 3 p.m., you send an email out to everybody like, hey, $5 off your pizza today. You bring in the business every day by having that list. So important. Website, search engine optimization, so getting yourself to the top of search. So if somebody searches pizzeria near me or pizza place near me, you're showing up at the top. Obviously very important. Your Google Maps profile, a lot of people use this. A lot of people use it to call, a lot of people use it to find where they're doing business. Other directories like Yelp, et cetera, but Google Maps is gonna be the biggest one. And then a sign outside the business, a very obvious one. And then getting on Instagram, getting on TikTok, and posting as much as you can about how amazing your new restaurant is. Next up, organic referrals. First step here is great food, right? And this is like the elephant in the room when it comes to marketing. Like we think we lack a marketing strategy when in reality the product just might not be that good. So, <laughs> Like nothing's gonna do better marketing for you than like the best pizza in the world at this restaurant, right? That's gonna be the cheapest cost per acquisition. It's gonna be the cheapest way to promote your business overall. However, we do need to get the word out somehow. But this is like, it's, it's the basis of everything, right? If you don't have great food, why are you even promoting it? 
and then mention it to all customers. So if I was the owner of this restaurant, I would say every single server at the end of every meal should be saying, hey, we're new. I would love it if you would tell your friends and family. And if you do, by the way, here's a $5 off coupon. So that's kind of incentivized, kind of just organic, right? But you could just do the organic thing. So how many of you are asking for referrals at the end of every single call you have with every single client? Good. But th that's like the cheapest marketing out there. Um, and it works. It works really well. Next up, strategic referrals. One idea I had was putting flyers in other businesses, so other local businesses who are just willing to support. Like, hey, we're new. Do you mind if you put this on your front desk? Yeah, no problem. Uh, incentivize referrals. This is the last one. My idea here is uh, a free meal to influencers if they post about the restaurant. So I just DM people who are like Utah foodie people or have Instagram followings around food or TikTok or whatever the platform is and say, hey, free meal, just come in and like post something about us. We'd really appreciate it. People love that. It's great content for them and they get free food. So this is the elephant in the room also. How much is all this going to cost is what I can hear everybody thinking, right? Like some of this stuff is free, but a lot of it is very variable. You can spend a lot or you can spend a little. The thing is, as we discussed before, there's monetary spend and then there's effort spend. It's not just about how much money, it's about how much energy can you actually put towards all this stuff because at the end of the day, you still gotta make good pizza, right? So you shouldn't be spending all your time marketing. You should still spend some time on the product. However, you've gotta figure out how to balance these. So I went ahead and kind of made this bar chart about um, how much effort and how much money each one of these is gonna take. We start out with asking for referrals. Literally the easiest thing you can do, everyone should be doing it. If you're not doing it, shame on you. Do it. Next up, your text and your email list. Now building this is not always cheap, but accessing it is very cheap. Sending an email, sending a text to a mass list of people that you have gathered is massive. And I've, I've uh, put the money very low, but the effort sometimes can be a little bit more because you wanna make sure that the emails and the texts you're sending are, it's not enough to just send a text, like it's gotta say something good, right? It's gotta have something good. Uh, next up, the sign outside. It's gonna cost uh, a little bit of uh, effort to design something that's good, but typically that one's not gonna cost you much money. And get creative with that one. You could put these signs anywhere. Next up, Instagram, TikTok posts. Obviously, it depends on social media for your business. Like YouTube might be better, right? Or Facebook might be better. Uh, but this is gonna be pretty high effort, uh, but it's low cost. Like you literally just need your phone. You're gonna take some good pictures. You could hire a professional videographer to help you out with things. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a lot more effort than money. However, again, we're trying to build this owned media where we've got a following of 10,000 people that we can just make a post. Like, Crumble Cookies does this, right? They're literally like, here's the cookies for the week and everybody rushes to Crumble Cookies every week and they've got like, I don't know, 50,000 people on Instagram who love what they do and all they have to do is make a post to drive sales. Whereas some people without that following would have to put money behind that same post to reach even a fraction of the same amount of people. Um, next up is a news feature. Again, low cost, but it's probably gonna be pretty high effort. You may have had to be in business for a while for some people to consider you. Uh, you may just have to be creative in how you reach out, uh, but it's totally possible and uh, it's, it's great exposure, uh, good for SEO, uh, SEO is search engine optimization. It's good for everything, uh, but again, you're gonna have to be creative about how you actually get them to talk to you and actually get featured. Um, next up is flyers and other businesses. Effort here is gonna be fairly high. You've gotta drive around and like make sure they're all right with it, but pretty low cost, you just gotta print the flyers put them in there, right? Uh, next up is Google Maps. You can pay somebody to optimize this. There's a lot of like one-time things here. Just make sure you fill out everything, like all of the information about your business in there. Make sure it's all accurate. And then you can also post to your Google My Business. Now, nobody's gonna like go to your Google My Business posts and, and your Google My Business is your Google Maps listing. I use them interchangeably. Nobody's gonna go there and decide to do business because you've posted, but it's, it's good for boosting your ranking. Um, and same with having like pictures, you could have like a 3D tour of your business on Google Maps, all of these things help. Uh, next up is website and SEO, very similar to Google Maps. Typically you're gonna end up paying a company for this. If you do it yourself, um, the biggest things are how fast is your site loading and are people having a good experience on it and does it have like the keywords, the relevant keywords around things, right? 
but this was my agency, like there's nothing better. We were ranked on the top page of Google for orthodontic marketing agency, right? There's nothing better than somebody searching that, finding you for free, and buying what you have. That's amazing. Next up, uh, paying influencers. Sometimes the effort to like find them can be a lot, depending on, they can be a lot to work with, sometimes depending on how cool they think they are. Um, and depending on if they want money or not, it could be expensive or not. Next up is social ads. I put the effort really high here. This is where most of my expertise lies. And so for me, the effort's lower, but it's because I've been like immersed in it for the last four years, right? But somebody brand new to running ads on social media is gonna have a really high learning curve. There's gonna be a lot of panic in there and there's quite a bit of money that you can spend on it. Uh, but again, it just depends on who you're trying to reach, how fast you make your money back, all that kind of thing. Uh, next up, we've got mailers. These are lower effort. You just design them once and ship them out. However, the cost typically to the impressions on social media is going to be higher. So impressions is how many people actually see the mailer. Like you're going to reach people for cheaper on social media, but mailers obviously are getting inside their mailbox, which, you know, depending on how many people you reach out to, what your niche is, what you're selling, uh, could be better for you. And then lastly, a billboard. Uh, typically, these are going to be pretty expensive, like $3,000 a month for like a major one. It's probably gone up since I last looked. Uh, but the effort, again, is just a design, put it up there, you know, sign a contract, and those are pretty low maintenance. But the, uh, some upfront effort to design something that's actually going to pique people's interest, right? Now let's, let's cover like the actual cost of all of this stuff. Um, and we're getting near the end, so I'm, I'll open it up to questions after that. So paid media. This is billboard, social media, whatever you're spending like money on to reach people. My estimate for this restaurant, I would spend between two and $7,000, depending on how much I have to work with and how aggressive I want to be, right? This is going to be like a cheap billboard somewhere and like $1,000 on social media ads. And that could get you a ton if you're really good at what you do. And it's a, uh, an irresistible offer that people are really excited about. Or it could do very little if it's very saturated and you don't know what you're doing with marketing. So that's the kind of like roulette game that you play with paid media. If you don't have an expert that's creating the, the creative, so the pictures, the images, the words that you're putting on these paid things, it's probably gonna be a waste of money. So that's where it's beneficial to work with an agency, but on top of the $2,000 to $7,000 you'd actually be spending to reach all these people, you'll have to pay the agency as well. So just factor that in. Next up, earned media. My estimate, this would be about two hours a week, okay? so. You're reaching out to news stations. You're trying to get people to relieve reviews, all that kind of thing. Owned media, 15 hours a week is my estimate. This is posting on social media mainly. It's, it's not like, th this is literally a part-time job. And unfortunately, that's kind of the way everything has gone, fortunately or unfortunately, I guess, depending on how much you like social media or don't. I saw uh, a video on Instagram the other day that said, I'm a small business owner, and unfortunately, that means I have to be a content creator too. So like this video, it's kind of how it is. Um, so you can obviously give this to someone on your team, but you're going to have to spend, somebody's gonna to have to spend 15 hours a week putting this content out if you want to grow that owned media side of things. Next up, organic referrals. Doesn't cost you any extra time or money except maybe two minutes every single time to ask somebody for a referral, right? Uh, strategic referrals, uh, my estimate's an hour and a half a week, dropping off flyers, making sure you're networking with other people who may be able to refer people to you. And then incentivize referrals, two to three hours a week, reaching out to the influencers, getting them to come in, back and forth between that. There's headspace and there's time and energy here. Okay, so just to be clear, our priorities here. Number one, take amazing care of your customers because it doesn't matter how much marketing you do, you're not taking care of the people that are with you, eventually that's gonna catch up with you. So there's a lot of companies that run into this issue where they're just sort of churning business. They, they treat a, a subset of their customers well, but they don't have systems in place to make everybody happy. And obviously you'll never make everybody happy, but let's say 90% of customers, right? And because of that, eventually the negative word of mouth catches up to their marketing. So somebody who has positive word of mouth and have heard really good things about your company and sees an ad about you, is more likely to click than somebody who's heard negative things about your company and sees an ad about you, right? So these two things either work for you or they work against you. And by, by two things, I mean 
taking care of amazing customers and then also doing your, your marketing. They can work together or they can work apart. But what happens is a lot of businesses, years and years down the road, they've treated so many people so poorly that their cost to acquire a customer is going to be way higher than the people who treat every single customer with the utmost respect and, and they take amazing care of them, right? And then the second one is focus as much as possible on turning all other marketing channels into owned media. I've said this over and over again, but if you can email someone or you can text them and they've opted into your list, it's the cheapest way to reach them at scale, um, as well as having a social media following. So focusing as much time as possible on that is massive. So just another visual there, we're taking our paid media or earned media or referrals or direct outreach and we're turning it into owned media. All right, so here's our full marketing plan now, right? We're, uh, I've just listed out everything we would do for this restaurant. I've talked about uh, you know, paid media. Let's say we end up spending 2,000 a month on social ads. That would be an aggressive approach. And we get a $3,000 a month billboard. Earned media, owned media, organic referrals, strategic, et cetera. And then my, my guess, uh, I mean, I don't know everything about this restaurant, but uh, this will definitely get us past our $500,000 a year mark in our first year. It's, it's pretty much inevitable if we're spending this much and if we're doing this much. And every, every business is different, every market is different, so I can't say these numbers will get you to that. However, the, the process is just writing down exactly what we've written on this execution side. And if it's working and it's getting us to our goal, then we're good. If not, we have to figure out why not. Do we need to spend more? Do we need to tweak the creative, the images, the pictures, the copy? Uh, copy is just a fancy word for words on, on the marketing materials that we're putting out? Or is there something else we need to do? This is how we put everything together. So for a lot of you, like you don't run a restaurant. Nobody here runs a restaurant. And the way it works for a lot of businesses is we generate leads, which means we have like name, phone, number, email probably. Maybe it's a referral, maybe it's from a social media ad, maybe it's from something else, right? And then we have to figure out how to convert those leads. And a lot of small business owners hate the word leads because the reality is if you generate 10 of them, probably only one or two are gonna close. Again, it depends on the industry, but those are the, the global numbers we saw all across all of our orthodontic clients for social media ads. If you're running like intent-based search ads on Google, you'll probably be closer to maybe 30 or 40% conversion. But even then, somebody who opts in says, hey, I'm interested in what you have, you'd be surprised that 50% of them never actually pick up the phone. Even if you call them three times in three days, you text them multiple times. I know because I did this, we actually hired a team of remote scheduling coordinators that called the leads on behalf of our clients. So we generate the leads, we call them immediately, then we call them again the same day, then we call them the next day, and we call them the day after that, and we text them for a week. 50% never even responded. I don't know why, maybe they were trying to click on the cat picture, but they accidentally clicked on the ad, right? But this is what, like, I just want to temper expectations because when we go, when we start marketing, it's like, oh my gosh, we got a lead. But a lead isn't a sale, not by any means. And so this is what this fixes, this sync strategy. So the first step in any good marketing plan is getting a single sync because if we have multiple syncs, we have lost leads. So for many of you, I, I assume this is kind of what's going on right now. You have some leads that come through email. You've got some that are like on your personal cell phone. You've got some that come through some random marketing app that you have. You've got some that come through your website and they go somewhere else. And you're losing people. You're forgetting about them because they're not all getting saved in one spot. So the first step is a single sync. And this is called a CRM, Customer Relationship Manager. There's millions of them out there. I'll tell you about my favorite one today. But Basically, what a CRM does, it just puts everything in one spot. Like, we've got all the leads in one spot, okay? We're good. Next, we just turn on one faucet at a time. So we're like, okay, let's figure out Facebook. We're gonna get people from Facebook. How do we do it? Then we turn on Instagram. Then we turn on Google Maps. Try to get as many people as from Google Maps as possible. Then we uh, turn on the website. You know, try to raise it in the search ranking so we're getting more and more people there. We uh, make sure we hire somebody to optimize the conversion so it's fast. So people can, you know, there's obvious buttons on the website everywhere where they can opt in and, and give us their information so, we can, so that we can call them. And then lastly, we uh, figure out our SMS 
and our, our email strategy. So we're sending people texts and emails regularly. And all of a sudden, your leads or your, your sink is full, but we're not done because we need the leads to actually show up to their appointments and we need them to close. So this is how this works. We've got our full sync. To get people to call, we need a combination of automations and actual calls. So let's say somebody sees your ad on Instagram, they click on it, they submit their name, phone, and email. They should be getting a text immediately. Like within one minute, it should be saying, hey, thanks so much for opting in. We're really excited you're interested in our mortgage offer or our insurance or whatever it is, right? Um, what's the best time for us to schedule an appointment? We're just asking some like easy to answer question where they can just respond back. So that's the automation. Then we call them again as soon as possible. Harvard did a study, 4,000% uh, more likely to close somebody if you contact them within the first five minutes. Now it's not always possible, I know we're busy, and the reality is like people who have money have jobs, so a lot of times they can't answer the phone right away. But how much more likely are you to reach somebody if they opted in and you contacted them within five minutes? They're probably still scrolling on their lunch break looking at cat videos, right? So they can probably answer the phone. Um, so we combine the automation and we combine the phone calls. And as I said, if they don't answer the first time, we reach out again the same day. We keep texting them for a week. We reach out again the next day and the next day. If you don't have appointments in your business, like e-commerce, for example, you're continuing to email them. You're sending them, hey, like I noticed you didn't check out. You added this to your cart, but we're sending you another email to make sure you, know, you don't have any questions. I'll answer any questions you have. Eventually, we get them to schedule. And then once they schedule, no-shows are the worst thing in the world. They waste time and money. So to get them to actually show up to the appointment, we're doing another set of automations. Hey, your appointment's at this time. Reply why to confirm. We don't take unconfirmed appointments. Reply why to confirm. <laughs> we text them every single, not every single day, but typically uh, seven days in advance. P.S. you should be booking within two to three days, but if they have to book um, like a week or two out, text them seven days in advance, text them 48 hours in advance, text them 24 hours in advance and an hour before. They shouldn't be able to forget about the appointment. You should be reminding them over and over again. And again, you can do this all through automation. You should call them again to confirm. Just leave a voicemail. Most people won't pick up to confirm. However, some people do. My massage therapist calls me like, yeah, I'll be there. Helps a ton because if they're not answering, you can move them over the schedule and fit somebody else in that schedule spot, right? And then hopefully they come in and close. And that's what this last kind of icon here represents. Um, so just some examples of what this looks like. This is where we get all the leads in one spot. This is a real client account. I took this screenshot yesterday. You can see a Facebook message there, a Google My Business review, and a text message there, and also an email. So all of these are in one spot. We're not gonna lose people. This is the first step, right? Then we track everything. So this is called the pipeline. As you can see, we've got people who have opted in, people who are having a conversation currently, people who have set an appointment, people who are pending treatment in this case, who is an orthodontist, and people who have started treatment. And then we've also got people who didn't start, cancellations, and then we have other stages as well. So you create whatever stage makes sense for your business, set of stages, and then you're moving people through this, and you have this visually set up so you make sure every day when you wake up, there's somebody in that conversation tab that said they were interested yesterday, that hasn't booked yet or hasn't closed yet, you're following up with them, right? And then this is an example of what automations look like. Uh, you can see this is the, the seven day appointment confirmation and reminders. If they send why, then uh, we're gonna send them a certain thing. If they don't respond why, we're gonna say something else. We're gonna talk back and forth with them. This is how the automations work and you can make really cool stuff nowadays. You can send them emails at a certain time, text at a certain time, optimize all of this stuff. So you're actually turning people that were leads into customers. So the steps here, again, centralized communication and reporting, increase the lead flow on each channel, and then streamline the scheduling and show up process. And that third one, well, practically nobody does all three of these, uh, but that third one is often forgotten. We talk about marketing, we talk about attention, we talk about leads, but the conversion process is where almost every small business falls down because they can't make the time to call, text, etc. So what do you do? You plug in the automations, and you get 
somebody who can do this almost full time following up with the leads because if you don't follow up with them, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, my favorite CRM, it's called High Level. The website is gohighlevel.com. You can get a 30 day free trial if you put my name afterwards, forward slash Keaton Walker. So that's the strategy for building a marketing plan. We figure out the six ways, uh, of the three ways to, to acquire a customer, which one we're going to use and how. And then we plug in this sync strategy to make sure that those leads are all accounted for. And then we follow up with them every single day until we grow our business. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, and hope you enjoy your next class as well. Thanks, guys. <clears throat>